to the ghost of Hot Ones guest past. I'm sorry for my, my judgment from home. You were brave and I get it. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by Emma Chamberlain. She's an internet juggernaut turned coffee mogul and fashion icon. Check out our YouTube page for everything from a la mode, European travel vlogs, to swap meet shopping hauls. Like me, you can check out chamberlaincoffee.com for all your coffee needs. Added the cake batter blend to my cart this morning. And finally, of course, anything goes with Emma Chamberlain wherever you get your podcasts. Emma Chamberlain, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I know that spicy hummus is like a part of your everyday diet. What's yes. going through your head right now as you prepare to take on the Hot Ones gauntlet? I actually feel really confident because I was telling you before we started recording, I've done this before. My friends and I went to a hot sauce store in LA a few years ago and bought your whole lineup and tried it on our own. So I'm like, I'm chilling. Like this is gonna be the easiest interview of my life. I can't wait, let's do it. <laughs> God, why am I like shaking? I'm, I know, no, it'll be, okay, it'll be fine. <laughs> Delicious, so good. Good vegan wing. Natalie Great Portman wing. coming through, <laughs> giving us the vegan wing recommendation. Thank you, Natalie, yes. <laughs> So you open your Vogue Beauty Secrets video by saying that you've always wanted to do one. Whether it's cooking with Josh Weissman or playing soccer with Kevin Hart, what's the thing that makes you excited about doing a YouTube video that's not on your own channel? Something that feels real and something that I think is fun too. Because I feel like video creating in general should be fun. Obviously there is sort of, oh, like we want this to perform well, we want this to do well. We want this to get a lot of views, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of that and you can't always escape that. But I think when a show or a series is just like rooted in fun in some way, that's what excites me. And like sharing information, having a cool conversation, that inspires me. That was like just delicious. I didn't even feel anything, so I'm ready. For number two. This is the Tropicante here in the two spot. Mmm. 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 So good. Nice little happy dance there. I love it. Here we go. I mean, I love hot sauce, so. We haven't ruined it for you yet. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Later, might not love it anymore. So one thing you and I share about putting videos on the internet is an all-consuming obsession with the edit. Quick shout out to Hot Ones editor, Colin Higgins. As yeah. somebody who's been copied ad nauseum across the web, what is the editing trope that you're happy to have birthed to the masses? And then can you give us another one that you never want to see again? Honestly, like my editing style when I first sort of started becoming known on the internet a little bit was super fast paced super crazy, like, you know, zooming in, zooming out, you know, like jump cut, jump cut, like crazy speed, right? Because that's kind of what kept people's attention. There was a time and a place for that, but now I can't stand it. And that's why like more recently I've been like, let's slow it down yeah, a little bit. Yeah, very melancholy kind it's of. Totally, and I'm I'm proud of that being sort of a new thing. Like let's, let's cool things down a little bit, you know? Do you have a favorite voice effect? I kind of love the echo. Yeah, me too. It's we hilarious. Love the echo. It never. I know you guys do <laughs> like the echo. We love the echo. <laughs> yes, it, it's fun. I'm like ready for the pain, and I know I'm gonna regret saying that, but <laughs> I'm feeling up. too good right now. And then not to lead the witness, but mm. I love this hot sauce. That one is so good. It's like going into, it's like taking a bite out of pizza or something. It's like eating a delicious pizza or it something. It is pizza eating. Mm -hmm. I'm taking this one home, actually. You can have them all. Mm. 
but that's the one. Yeah, that's delicious. And it has a cat on it, so that makes there me happy. Go. So in the same way that I'm inextricably linked to wings, you are connected to coffee, which you've been slurping down in prolific quantities since you first started making YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. In layman's terms, what is the difference between like a gas station $1 cup of coffee and then the $5 cup that you get at some like third wave coffee cafe? So not to be like a complete nerd about it. Be a nerd be about like, it. Be you know, like how it. people are with wine and they're like, no, no, it's like... <laughs> melt this one's really like melon and trees i mean i'm not fully like that with coffee but you know when you drink gas station coffee it's like one note it's just like it's like a suggestion of a coffee flavor and then a really good cup of coffee is like oh my god first sip it's like oh it's kind of nutty and then it's like oh but now it's kind of bitter and then it's like and it's a journey I would say the journey for a nice cup of coffee is just much longer. And and it's more, you know, exciting. You want to go back and have more. And also you don't need to add a bunch of milk and sugar to it to make it taste interesting. F Mary Kill, whole milk, oat milk, nut milk. Okay. Mary almond milk. F the oat milk. Kill the whole milk. How about you? F the S out of that whole milk. Oh, yes! Wait, really? You're uh, whole milk? Right, no. Do you not have issues? No, you know what? I, I'm i going with the whole milk. I just thought that that was like a funny thing to say. That was just the reaction <laughs> I was like, going no, for. No, Emma, that yeah, was I'm a bit. Like, you fucked it up, yeah. and now we have to move on. Love you. Okay. <laughs> I'm just like loving talking and like stalling. Now yeah, I'm me stalling. too. That's how the show goes, okay, yeah. Great. Oh my God, this one's so good too. Now it's in my teeth though. Mm hmm Easier than maybe the first time you did it. Honestly, oh. This is the first one where I'm like, okay. <laughs> I get what the show is about, you know what I mean? Like, okay. That happens. Yeah. So believe it or not, there's nothing we like more here on Hot Ones than a deep dive into interior design and decor. And your recent house tour on Architectural Digest was one of the best in recent memory. One time I got in a fight with a designer. Quick shout out to Ren, because he wouldn't shout let out. me put a TV above the fireplace. Or he was fighting with me about a TV above the fireplace. What's the thing that caused the most tension between you and your design team? It's actually funny because I luckily am not a huge TV person. And so I remember there was like a conversation about my fireplace and like, hey, are we going to put a TV there? And I was like, no. And they were like, oh, love you. <laughs> like, thank God. Um, biggest fight. They don't like the TV above the fireplaces. No, no, no. They hate it. Yeah. Because it completely. And I kind of get it because it does sort of ruin it. But it's also like we live. We live right. There. That's, that's what that's why I was like, listen. Dude, because he, he was yeah. just talking to, he's like, well, what about like a formal dining room? I was like, yeah. don't try to tell me what my lifestyle no. is. Like, totally. this is the heartbeat of this entire apartment. You know, like totally. I watch a lot of college football and that's like why I'm getting the biggest TV ever above that fireplace. A like, thousand percent. don't tell me how to live my life, Ren. Amen. <laughs> Halfway point. Oh, this one. See, there's two sides on this wing. One that has a bunch of the sauce, one that doesn't. I'm choosing the one that does have a lot of the sauce on it. There you go. Because I'm loyal to the show. Remember this. Respect. Okay. Respect. Let's do it. Mmm. That is so good too. Wait. Mmm. That's one of those kind of complicated flavor. It's really good ones. though. Yeah, a chili oil base, which is a little unique for us over here. I mean, honestly, like it fucking hurts really bad. <laughs> I will be honest, but it's so fucking good that like, this is so good. Yeah. Just maybe on a smaller scale, <laughs> like drizzling it on top of like something, mm -hmm. right? Not having like a whole like bite of it, big, big bite. Really delicious though. What so far has been the greatest triumph of your cooking tutorials? And then can you give us your biggest fail? My biggest triumph, like making nut milk. I think I might have deleted that one. 
but it was a huge success. I didn't realize that you could so easily make your own nut milk. Tried it, slayed it, loved it. Uh, haven't done it since, but good to know. And my biggest fail was probably, like literally so many years ago, I tried to make coffee cake. Like this was like one of my first videos. And it was just like so, so disgusting. Anything I made when I was like 16 was a fail. Could not cook back then. Can you give us one highlight and one low light from hosting the red carpet at last year's Met Gala? Okay, a highlight was like accidentally having my first meme moment. Like, whoa. Jack. Thank you, Jack Harlow. <laughs> um, I still like have never spoken to him about that. So I think we could have a fun bonding moment over that next time I run into him. But the low light was, this is so TMI and gross. I had a tonsil stone. Do you know what a tonsil stone no, is? No, I don't know what a tonsil oh, stone is. Oh, it's so gross. It's basically like a buildup of like bacteria on your tonsil that you can get if you have allergies or like sinus drip, whatever. And they like taste bad and like kind of can smell bad too. And I had one while I'm supposed to be interviewing people for four hours straight, like this close too. I was eating Altoids. I was eating Altoids. Providing a cover. Yeah, um, it, that was like brutal for me. I was like freaking out in between each one. Like, I, like what? Like, is it bad? Like, whatever. But we got through it. We got through it. But that was shitty. Well, you know what? Speaking of, you know, the walls closing in on you, being pressed, but moving on. Are you ready to move to the back half here? <sighs> Let's go to the back half. So this next one is the turmeric bomb here in the sixth spot. I think I need to start taking a little smaller bites. <laughs> Cause like I've been doing big ones this whole time. Yeah. Time to slow down. So it's not every day that someone goes from try on thrift hauls at their parents' house to becoming Vogue's digital muse and working with the likes of Louis Vuitton and Levi's. What's a memory you have of Paris Fashion Week being a Zoolander-like parody of itself? Okay, my favorite thing to witness, and listen, I'm not, laughing at anyone because I would probably do the same thing, but also like maybe we're laughing together. I don't know. Maybe I am making fun of them. I don't know. Um, like this whole sort of getting the right moment for the IG story type of thing. So it's like, maybe it's at an after party or something and a Paris Fashion Week after party. And everybody's like, you know, like dancing, like whatever, like, you know, acting like they're having the best time. Meanwhile, like it's kind of a chill after party. And then like phones down and it's just like, <laughs> and I just feel like I see a lot of that at Fashion Week where it's like everyone's in on the same like... Same hustle. The same hustle, the same illusion. It's kind of like a really magical moment in human, <laughs> like in society. Like the fact that right. like everybody comes together to be like, Fashion Week is the best week ever. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like the fact that everybody's kind of painting this picture together, like community. It is beautiful. Yeah. Cosmic Disco. Yeah. <laughs> disco. <laughs> Cosmic Disco. Let's do it. I went in for like a big bite and then was like, I saw ah. that. Ow, ow. Another level, yeah, 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 that one's bad. This one's really bad. <laughs> yeah. It's like full fucking, like, it is a different sauce. We start to like kind of jump planes here in the back half, it like skips some levels, you know? No, like we just like, holy fuck. For each one, it was like times two, times two, times, it was like times fucking 14 with that one. Yeah, well, wait till you get to the next one. No, Not to leave I'm, the witness here. Yeah, no. <laughs> mm. What distinguishes a good peanut butter from a mediocre one? And then what's your go-to pro tip for making it from scratch at home? Okay, so. See, now this is when you start to get distracted by your mm -hmm. pain and it's just like, peanut butter? <laughs> oh, what? Um, for me, a good peanut butter is all natural. It's like changing the way my, my, yeah. my, my box, my voice box. Unfortunately, you damaged my voice box. Um, I prefer like an all natural, just like peanuts and salt vibe. Like that is the best. And I think the reason for that is, is like, I like peanut flavor. 
Whereas like when um like the <laughs> holy fuck, you can't think. See, this is why you're an evil genius. <laughs> Thank you, um, I guess. Like Jif peanut butter is like too fake. It tastes like icing. Like it's not, that's not peanut butter. I want peanuts and that's it. And when you're making it at home, add a little bit of vanilla bean. Wow, is that delicious. And some dates, it's really good. Moving on. Well, this next one is the bomb beyond insanity. Mm -hmm. I've tried this one actually. Yeah. But I don't think I, I don't remember. I think this was actually the hottest one I did when I yeah. tried it at home, so. I don't even want to touch it with my finger. I feel like it's bad. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. <coughs> Fuck. No, this is when it gets fucking serious. It's for real. I can't even believe it goes more than this. <laughs> I can't even believe there's more than this. Okay. What's the hardest influencer dollar to make and what would you say is the easiest? The hardest? Okay, okay, let's think. Oh, fuck. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. This is like, this is kind of like a relatively like religious experience. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes you can get a little bit of a high off of it. A little no, high, I, high I off kind of, of admit, oh fuck, it hurts so fast. And it's a little trippy. <laughs> it gets a little trippy. Okay. I'm like fully sobbing. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know, and I want everyone back here to know, I'm not scared, so you shouldn't be scared. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm okay. But I, I'm like gushing tears. You have just, it's like the one, like it's like out of a movie. Believe them. It's out of a movie. Like this is a part of the fucking Hot One spiritual awakening. <laughs> and I'm here for the experience. Like I'm here for it. Okay. So the easiest, leave it. It's part of it. I love it. Yes. No, I mean it fucking hurts so fucking bad. <laughs> okay. Um. The easiest dollar you make as an influencer, I would say, would be like holding up a product on Instagram, taking a photo, you know, and posting it being like, hashtag ad. <laughs> That's just easy. Ow! <laughs> um, I just wish people knew at home that like when everybody's crying and like everybody's like, can't get words out that like this shit's serious. Right. Like, I, cause I feel like even I, when I used to watch it, I was like, this shit's not that serious. Like you're a pussy. <sighs> and now I'm like, no, Right. I'm so sorry um, <laughs> for everything. To the ghosts of Hot Ones Guest Pass. To the ghosts of Hot Ones Guest Pass. I'm sorry for my, my judgment from home. You were brave and I get it. Okay, let's, let's rock on. This next one is Pucker Butt's Unique Garlic. I don't consider myself like, I don't know, I'm just feeling particularly spiritual, praying that God knows what else <laughs> is up there. In these trying times. In these trying times. It has a good flavor in the beginning. <laughs> right, and then, so your podcast, Anything Goes with Emma Chamberlain, is an episodic thought exercise where you ponder questions that range from how much privacy a celebrity is entitled to, to whether or not anyone is actually cool. As someone who's open about the fact that their opinions change all the time, what's like the last or most recent like bad take you've had on your own podcast? I don't know, to be honest, like I don't look at any of my, anything I've ever said, I almost throw it in the dumpster behind me. Yeah, it's like, just a stream of once consciousness. Once I say it, it's true right then, but it might not be true literally tomorrow. And I try to make sure everyone knows that so that, you know, it's not like anyone's like, but Emma, what about that that you said? 
It's like, no, I'm always ebbing and flowing, baby. And that's a good, that's a good place to be. <laughs> Are we going in? If you're ready. Are we last dabbing it? We're last dabbing it, if you're ready. I'm fucking doing it. Oh, that's a good shake. How much are we doing here? That looks measured. That is looking good. That is looking good. Yeah, that's perfect. Any more than that. That is good. All right. I'm just like, like taking my time, putting it back. Just taking my time. I'll screw it back on too, just for, <laughs> for you guys. So it looks good on the table. Shout out to the crew. Shout out to Don't the worry, crew. I'm not like stopping. Just... <laughs> All right. And it's time to go. Cheers, Emma. All right, cheers. And while that settles, nice long wind up. To close things out, what I wanna do is we'll prey on your natural creative instincts and aesthetic. Can you rearrange the Hot Ones gauntlet from favorite to least <coughs> favorite based entirely on the artistic appeal of the labels? Like which one I think is the most aesthetic? Yeah, aesthetically okay, pleasing yeah, yeah. to Okay, yeah, yeah, this least. is like actually my dream. Yeah, I can Of an tell. activity, especially during my like, what I'm feeling right now. Although part of me like wants to like, finish the wing to like really like do it. Should we fucking finish it? Let's do it? it, let's go. Okay. Look, I'm so, do I regret? Okay. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. Okay, I'm determined, one more bite. Incredible. I'm not a baby and I want everyone out there to know that I fucking came here and I fucking did it. <laughs> Let them know. This has been my dream since I first started. YouTube was to one day come here and I'm fucking finishing the last week, okay? It I'm was? I'm finishing the last Wait, week. Wait, what? Yes! Mm. I always wanted to come on the show because I've been obsessed with it since it like literally came out and started however long ago and I was like once I fucking go on hot ones I like I can retire like that's always been my thing and so like I'm fucking finishing the wing <laughs> okay Pico Rico with the cat your favorite that cat is just so cute it has to go first it makes me want to buy the hot sauce because I love when animals are on stuff. Next, we're gonna go with this one. I really, I like the colors, very inviting. Not traditional, but personal. I love that little branding. I really, <coughs> I really like this one. I mean, it's you guys, so like, <laughs> but I like it because it's simple and effective and classic, and that's exactly what it is. This one for some reason is going last. Like, don't want to offend anyone, but I just like feel like it reminds me of, of like a Florida like grandma. <laughs> okay, do you know what? Fuck it. I'm just zooming through now. There we go. Okay, this one reminds me of like somebody. This is like the Burning Man edition. <laughs> the bomb. It's effective and it's accurate. So. Final touches. <laughs> Final, Final touches. I'm committing to this. Oh my god. And there you have it, set it in stone and hang it in the Louvre. Emma Chamberlain taking on the Hot Ones gauntlet and living to tell the tale. Now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. This camera, this camera, this camera, let the people know what you have going on in your life. <coughs> um, yes, yes. Um, well, I have a coffee company, uh, chamberlaincoffee.com. Pick up some coffee, tea, coffee and tea related accessories. I have a podcast, Anything Goes. Check it out, new episodes all the time, every Thursday, every week. Um, and sometimes I make YouTube videos when, my, when it sets my soul on fire. Thank you, Sean. There what a day. What a day. You did it. That was so fun. What are you gonna tell your dad? That this shit's serious <laughs> and, and that I saw in your face that you're there with me. Right there with you. You were there with me? Oh my God, I shouldn't touch my eye. Yeah, be careful. I did You made it all the way to this point. All the way to this point. Not touching my eye. Yeah, only to. That was so fun. You had a good time? <sighs> Are you guys free for another hour? Let's do it again. <laughs>
Thank you so much for watching today's video. And Hot Ones fans, I have a very exciting announcement. The Hot Ones Shake Shack collab is finally here. The Hot Ones cheese fries, the Hot Ones burger, the Hot Ones chicken, all made with a shack sauce that includes Hot Ones the classic along with the last dab. It's very spicy, it's very delicious, and it's available for a limited time now through the end of the year at Shake Shacks nationwide and via the Shake Shack app. Be careful around your eyes and don't forget to order a milkshake.